Hola, ¿qué tal? Hi, how are you? Soy Catherine y soy vuestra profesora de español. I'm Catherine and I'm your Spanish teacher. Y hoy vamos a seguir practicando nuestra pronunciación. And today we're going to keep on practicing our pronunciation. Vale, adelante. Let's go. Entonces, es la parte 3 de nuestras cuatro clases sobre este tema. So it's the third part out of four parts on this topic. Y ya hemos aprendido los sonidos en español difíciles. So we already have overviewed some tricky Spanish sounds. Uh, we did some diphthong practice in the last lesson. Uh, and today we're going to focus on stress in Spanish words, el acento en las palabras españolas y las trabalenguas and some tongue twisters that can help us to master our pronunciation. Okay. And la clase número cuatro es la clase en directo on, uh, en Zoom. Uh, so uh, the fourth class is going to be a live practice class on Zoom. We're going to practice our speaking and pronunciation. And also we're going to have a lesson on culture where I'm going to speak about different accents, different variations of Spanish pronunciation across the Spanish speaking countries. Because yet again, the pronunciation that I offer is closer to Spanish from Spain. O sea, para mí el acento que estoy utilizando en estos vídeos son, eh, es el acento típico de España porque yo vivo en España because I live in Spain y por eso eh, es importante reconocer uh, todos esos acentos diferentes, bueno, no todos, pero muchos acentos diferentes del mundo hispano. So that's why it's important to recognize different accents in the Spanish speaking world. At least may, maybe not all of them, but maybe the most um, outstanding ones or the most like typical ones, so to speak. Vale, muy bien. And don't forget about our uh, worksheet where you can uh, practice all of the skills that we are talking about in this lessons, because it's a lot of information, I understand that, but you can obviously recopulate it and see it in our 30 days challenge in order to master our pronunciation and it will boost your knowledge greatly in order to pronounce the things correctly, read them correctly. It looks like this. We have the challenge and we have some examples and some recordings on how to do it. Vale. Bueno, primero vamos a repasar, a repasar un poco. So let's revise a little bit first. We're going to read different places uh, that contain some um different syllables now i'm going to yet again give you an opportunity to read for yourself and then compare to how i read it vale la primera palabra the first one bahamas la segunda corea next one it contains a lot of little things no etiopia La siguiente, the next one. Georgia. Mm -hmm. Don't forget how to pronounce all the G's and all that. Vale, la siguiente. Guinea. Guinea. Israel. Laos, Turquía, India, Rumanía, Argelia, Francia. Nueva Zelanda, uh -huh. Bolivia, uh -huh. Ecuador uh -huh. y Uruguay. Vale. 
Vale, entonces, ¿cómo funciona el acento en español? How does the stress in Spanish works? Uh, what is important to know about stress in Spanish? That it has a norm. It's not random. It has a, uh, a few norms that it follows. Y si no sigue las normas que vamos a hablar, de las cuales vamos a hablar, ponemos el acento gráfico. So, if a word doesn't want to follow these rules, it will have a graphic accent. So it's crucial to put this accent. And uh, unless you see one of these in the word, you're going to be reading it using either of these rules. Entonces, cuando una palabra, the word, termina en, when the word ends with una vocal, a vowel o diptongo o una n o s o n o s so if it ends with a vowel or a diphthong or if it is uh, ending with n or s for example a word like palabra here we are o sigue diphthongo no o normas ajá o por ejemplo um, bueno no tenemos una palabra que termine en n but it's pretty much the same thing. We're going to put the accent, acento, en la penúltima sílaba. What does it mean, penúltima? It's one before last. Yeah, for example, palabra A. Palabra, one before last. Termina. A, it's a vowel. Termina. Mismo aquí. Acento, no? One before last. Sigue. I, ¿no? Normas, S, O, ponemos, E. Mm -hmm. So, menos, E. So, all of these words, as you see, acento mismo, we're going to put, if it ends with a vowel or a diphthong, or an or S, out of all the consonants, these two, we're going to put the accent on the one before last. Right, what happens if it doesn't follow this rule? For example, penúltima. By the rule, it has to be one before last. This one, but it doesn't happen. Therefore, we need to put a graphic accent over here. Penúltima, u. Mm -hmm. Sílaba, lo mismo. Coincidentally, both of them <laughs> are the exceptions. No, the end was a, uh, was a uh, vowel, but the accent doesn't really fall on this one, so we need to put a graphic accent here, sílaba. Lo mismo, uh, bueno, gráfico. No, it's not gráfico, it ends with, an, um, with, a, um, with a vowel, no? And we will need to put a, an accent, no, acento. Mm -hmm. Well, this one is just for the, basically, <laughs> for the, uh, for the description of it. No, o, acento, it's, everything is correct here. You don't really need it here, but just, I, I just put it to illustrate, basically, just for fun. <laughs> My version of fun, basically. Uh -huh. Entonces, cuando la palabra termina en una consonante, menos N o S, so when a word ends with a consonant uh, that is not N or S, yeah, as you see, it's kind of um, like the minority, to be fair, out of all the words that we can see here on this slide. For example, we only have here Espanol, O, and it ends with a consonant that is not N or S, it's an L. O, por ejemplo, eh, aquí eh, tenemos vocal, también es una L, so this word also. And as you can see, the accent falls on the last syllable, vocal, vocal, con una L. Si miramos las palabras anteriores, no, por ejemplo, Ecuador, R, it's a, it's a, a consonant, it's not an N or S, and it falls on the last syllable. And if it doesn't happen, yet again, we'll have to put the graphic accent on it, vale. Entonces, vamos a repetirlo. Si la palabra termina en una vocal o diptongo o n o s, el acento cae en la penúltima sílaba. So, if a word ends with a vowel or a diphthong and either n o s, it's going to be 
one syllable before last. And uh, if the word ends with uh, a consonant, um, except for N and S, it's going to be on the last syllable. Vale. Vale, pues ahora sabemos todo eh, de lo que tenemos que saber sobre la pronunciación en español. So, now we basically know everything we need in order to pronounce the things in Spanish and read the things in Spanish and how to put the accent and things of a kind. What we're going to do now is we're going to practice. Vale, practicamos con las trabalenguas. Uh, so, we're going to... Uh, practice with tongue twisters. That's the best way of practicing your pronunciation. It's a little bit complicated. I'm going to be reading them slowly, but feel free to speed it up when you feel confident and um, basically have fun with it. If you uh, can't get it on the first try, just laugh about it. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I bet you can't do uh, all of the uh, tongue twisters in your native tongue. I can't for sure. So, That's going to be the case. Entonces, la primera. Let's figure out what it means first. Tan caro es el carro. So expensive is the car. Que por caro no compro el carro. Here we are practicing R's. No, the long one, the short one. So, the car is so expensive that que por caro, because it's so expensive, no compro el carro. I don't buy this car. And here is the little illustration of it in case you are. <laughs> Not all of them make sense, obviously. They're mostly for the pronunciation. Okay, let's give it a go, shall we? Venga. Tan caro es el carro que el por carro no compro el carro. Mm -hmm. Tan caro es el carro que por caro no compro el carro. Okay, have fun with it. Don't forget to have fun with it, laugh about it, and try your best to focus here on the way you pronounce the R's, on the way you pronounce here K, take care of the all the C's here that are going to be K's, all of that. Vale, tan caro es el carro que por caro no compro el carro. Venga, la siguiente. Let's do the next one. Okay, so it's about a coffee, as you see in the picture. Let's figure out what it means first, then we'll try to pronounce it. We're going to practice, practice the letter CH. Si le echa leche al café. Um, so you are going to uh, put uh, the coffee, like to pour the coffee to coffee. Para hacer café con leche. To make coffee with milk. Here we need to take care with our seats, with our chair. Uh, ya yeah, hacer café si le echa uh, si le echa leche al café para hacer café con leche ajá uh -huh. so you put milk in the coffee to uh, to to make a latte to make coffee with milk para hacer leche con café so to do milk with coffee qué hace falta que le eche so qué hace falta que le eche what is needed for me to pour into it. So to, uh, entonces, vamos a intentar a leerlo. Let's try to read it. Si le echa leche al café para hacer café con leche, para hacer leche con café, ¿qué hace falta que le eche? ¿Mm? Yeah, feel free to... Yeah. Uh, slow it down to uh, try your best to read it in blocks. For example, la primera frase y la segunda, so the first phrase, the second. Si le echa leche al café para hacer café con leche, para hacer leche con café, ¿qué hace falta que le eche? All right, you're doing great. <laughs> like in all these exercise videos, you know, when the teacher congratulates you with it, I'm sure you're doing great as well. Venga. Okay, this one is all about different pronunciations of theta, K, C, and this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's figure out what it means first and then let's try to pronounce it. Pedro Pérez pesca peces para Paco Paz Jiménez. So, 
uh, a person whose name and surname is Pedro Perez. He fishes the fishes for his friend Paco Paz Jimenez. So both of Pedro Perez and Paco Paz Jimenez is uh, are names of people. No, so one of them fishes uh, some fishes for this other person. Para and then it repeats itself, but in the other way, the other way around. Para Paco Paz Jimenez pes pesca peces Pedro Perez. Okay, so yeah, it's a little bit challenging even for me because there are too many th s situations, but we are going to get through it. Let's give it a go, shall we? Pedro Perez pesca peces para Paco Paz Jimenez. Para Paco Paz Jimenez pesca peces Pedro Perez. Feel free to speed it up if you feel like, and don't forget to have fun with it. Vale. Pedro Pérez pesca peces para Paco Paz Jiménez. Para Paco Paz Jiménez pesca peces Pedro Pérez. Or something like that. Yeah. Obviously, you don't need to necessarily do it quick. As long as you um, have fun and practice all the sounds here, I'm fine with that. Vale. So, next one is about a boar, un jabali, and a birdie, un pájaro. And it's about kh sound. Okay, so let's figure out what it means and let's pronounce it then. Un jabalí y un pájaro juegan juntos en la jungla. So a boar and a birdie are playing together in the jungle. And the next one is just the other way around. En la jungla, in the jungle, eh, juegan juntos un pájaro y un jabalí. Okay, right. Vamos a intentarlo. Let's try it. Un jabalí y un pájaro juegan juntos en la jungla. En la jungla juegan juntos un pájaro y un jabalí. All right? Yeah, you can speed it up if you feel like. Un jabalí y un pájaro juegan juntos en la jungla. En la jungla juegan juntos un pájaro y un jabalí. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the next one. This one is to practice your sound y. Mm -hmm. La anilla de llavero no tiene llave. So the um, little ring of the uh, key, um, key holder or the, the key ring, basically, doesn't have a key. La anilla de llavero no tiene llave. ¿Quién se ha llevado la llave de la anilla de llavero? So who has taken the key from the uh, ring of the key um, of the key ring. No? Entonces, la anilla de llavero no tiene llave. ¿Quién se ha llevado la llave de la anilla de llavero? Mm -hmm. A kind of like a yes sound. La anilla de llavero no tiene llave. ¿Quién se ha llevado la llave de la anilla de llavero? Mm -hmm. All right, and the next one is easier than it looks. <laughs> it's about a little tube, no, like a, uh-huh. So it is a word play between V and B that we know that are pronounced the same, okay? Let's figure out what it means first. Juan tuvo un tubo. So a person named Juan had a past tense of to have, tuvo, Un tubo, a tube, a tube like this. Y el tubo que tuvo se le rompió. And a tube that he had, tube, have, they pronounce exactly the same, they're written differently. Se le rompió. It broke. No, it broke into pieces, it fell apart. Y para recuperar el tubo que tuvo, and to recuperate, to like re recollect the tube that he had, tuvo que comprar un tubo. So he had to buy a tube. Tuvo que comprar un tubo. Igual al tubo que tuvo. So the same one, the same one as the tube that he had. Basically, these two words are pronounced the same. So it's way easier than it sounds. Venga. Juan tuvo un tubo. El tubo que tuvo se le rompió. 
Y para recuperar el tubo que tuvo, tuve que comprar un tubo igual al tubo que tuvo. Yeah, so we don't differentiate these two anyhow. They're pronounced exactly the same. That's the idea of the whole thing, that they are sp uh, spelled differently, they mean different things, but they're pronounced the same. Vale, Juan tuvo un... Uh, <laughs> here I go as well. Uh, Juan tuvo un tubo. El tubo que tuvo se le rompió. Y para recuperar el tubo que tuvo, tuve que comprar un tubo. Igual al tubo que tuvo. Okay, sounds silly. But feel free to try it for yourself, to have a laugh, to have a great time. Vale. Vale, pues genial. Espero que uh, habéis tenido uh, un tiempo muy divertido. I hope you, I hope you, you had a fun time. Y espero que nos veamos pronto en la sesión en directo. And hope we'll see each other soon in the live lesson. Mm -hmm. We're going to, as I told you, learn about different accents in Spanish and practice out of pronunciation and speaking together. The link is below and I really hope to see you there. We're going to practice and uh, get to know each other and get to know other Spanish learners as well. Vale, y pues mucha suerte, uh, good luck, y nos vemos pronto, and we'll see each other soon. Ciao, ciao.